Welcome to the MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. Eh, I'm just winging it. <laughs> I see. So, you're not going to take things seriously and teach the younger kids how to do stuff? Well, as we, as we learned, taking things seriously, it's through general meh. It's the chaos is where it's at. I see, I see. Also joining us is Jacob. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? Uh, hold, hold, uh, I'm fine, but uh, hold on. Something, something's not right. Uh, Norman, what's going on? Like, can you explain this? Like, uh, this is episode three. It's not. No, wait. Hold on. What kind of what kind of a timey wimey thing is this? Didn't you, you like know? previously re- review episodes five and eight? How can we are we're on number three now? You know, I discovered by gaslighting. You can solve a lot of problems. <laughs> so wait, this is all just an elaborate ruse to uh, to destroy our perception of real life. Probably, I don't know. Anyway, I'm cool with that. <laughs> anyway, in today's episode, we are going to review My Little Pony Tell Your Tale, uh, episode number three. Zip gets her wings. In this episode. Uh, let's see. Uh, Zip Storm noticed some of her fellow Pegasi struggling to fly while she has already become an expert at it. So, how will she deal with this? Will she teach them? Will she just ignore them and just live her own life? Well, uh, watch and see, I guess. So, before we head in, first impressions are in order. And, Sil, what do you think? Oh, this was a pretty fun episode, a good, actually it's an example, I think, of why Tell Your Tale is continuing on while Make Your Mark is winding down. Mm-hmm. And and we can talk about that as we go through uh, the events. All right. All the events. I, I. So many events. <laughs> and Jacob, what about you? Yeah, pretty much what Sura said, this is one of the better examples why you uh, Tell your tale is better than make your mark in many ways. And I'll try to hold back the baby talk. <laughs> All right. Uh, as for me, this one was fun. I, I feel like the general idea for what tell your tale is, is this. This is what tell your tale should be. Uh, it's a, snip, a snippet of good ideas that can be awesome if done right. So, um... If you have not watched this, uh, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed it. It was five minutes. So instead of going through scene by scene, I'm just going to go for overall. So characters. It's heavily focused on Zip. Zip here knows how to fly. She has ambitions of flying. And she, she her first appearance in the movie shows us that she kind of knows how to fly technically glide or as Buzz Lightyear would say falling with style so having the power to fly is well make, makes her a natural so what do you guys think of Zip here? Silver? Well I enjoy it I mean first off she gets sort of strong armed or strong hoofed into uh being the teacher and it takes and i like that it takes a little time and reflection to uh realize hey there was a time where she wasn't the best at this it was it's simply a question of well as said don't give up don't give up and uh well then there boy the talk about Easy in this episode. We can <laughs> we can throw in some extra stuff about that, like in short order. <laughs> but yes. uh, basically, this is a side of Zip that we didn't get to see and make your mark, being a teacher or trying to help out her fellow Pegasi, because in the Make Your Mark, she was so fixated on the coming threat and Twilight's warning, which make it a lot of sense but i'm glad we had this other setting to for her to open up and show her other side 
Ah, totally agree. With that like it shows a more gentle side of her. Uh, instead of exactly, yeah. Instead of the rough, gruff um, gumshoe that she wants to be known as. Well, she's trying to be before she becomes queen. Uh, wait, she's doing. She's getting succession first before. Oh, okay, makes sense. She, she's the elder sister. She will be queen, and boy, she does not want to be. Mm. All right, makes sense. Jacob, what about what about you? What do you think of Zip? Well, Zip should uh, take solace in knowing that uh, her name is Zip and not Hip. <laughs> do you know why? Why? Because then, instead of Zipsters, her followers would be called Hipsters. <sighs> ah, thank goodness for small blessings. <laughs> do 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 the drum thing. Do the drum thing. Thank you. But yeah, uh, yeah, this is basically, uh, sh- this episode is basically showing Zip at her best. And <laughs> also it shows what Silver said earlier, that here there's uh, showing where Zip doesn't want to be involved in anything that where she would end up as a leader. Like earlier with the uh, internet followers that... Uh, Pip is trying to help promote, and then there's also the part later down the line uh, when she when the whole uh, teacher thing for the new Pegasus is forced upon her, and she's less than enthusiastic trying to help them, but after a little reflection, she decides to just jump right back in. Also, can we talk about ba- little baby Zip? Little baby Zip, who is so adorable and uh, such a better showing for Queen Haven. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. yeah. Toad's cute. Good good mother. Definitely a very different feel than, uh, than even in the movie. Pretty much. Mm-hmm. But because the only thing that movie focused on was uh, keeping up on pe- appearances, but not so much the... Uh, Parents and daughter relationship. Hmm. But context clues, right? Context clues because ah, ah, so cute, so cute, and she has a cutie mark. But well, what was I saying? Uh, yes. Um, with with Zip, I I I like her character here because she she didn't really want to teach. At the Pegasi, how to fly? Not because she was, what's what I'm looking for? Not because she was selfish or kind of stingy with her, uh, with stingy with her knowledge. She, she's just. I think I feel she just doesn't want to deal with people. Like, is it true? Do you feel that way? Like. She doesn't want to deal with people more of a... I won't say introvert. Do you say she's an introvert? Well, she's yeah, I would, not, I would go with it. I mean, I wouldn't exactly Be call her introvert. She just doesn't... Yeah, basically, it's more like uh, she doesn't want to uh, put herself out there. Hmm. I think that's yeah. the best way to describe it. And you, Silver? Well, she does seem, seem like she's most happy just flying. Now, I don't know if she uh, has more fun flying with others or if it's just a little time to be above it all. But she's had to do it all in secret for so long. I guess it's hard to share that with the rest of the world. It may be that she, because she's had to live a sort of double life or lie, uh She's not used to being open and expressive now. Mm-hmm. And I, I was thinking beforehand, right? Like, oh, maybe she doesn't like to show off her talents after getting the power to fly. But no, um, she she's basically the Rainbow Dash uh, analogy here. Uh, she, she has the flying and whatnot, but technically she's not. She, like, that's, that's the funny part for... 
uh, G5, you would think that uh, Zip here is the Rainbow Dash analogy or the Rainbow Dash replacement. But yeah, she knows how to fly. She's cool and whatnot. But no, the last thing she wants is to quote-unquote show off. And that she- confused me when I see the first appearance for her. Like, oh, she's doing stunts. She's um, a superhero landing or the Akira motorcycle thing. But it feels like, what is she doing? Like, what is she? You know what I mean? Yeah, from the first appearance in the Terry Hotel, it's basically shown that she doesn't want attention on her. Yeah, that, that's the thing. She doesn't want the attention, but the things that she's doing is getting attention. Well, it's the it's the paradox. She's pushing herself, which looks really cool and gains of attraction, but she doesn't want f- that focus. Mostly, I think, because she's afraid of the responsibility that's coming on later in life. Probably. I, I guess you can say that she just wants to have fun, and anything that makes her stand out is a big no-no, but... <laughs> Like you mentioned, it's a paradox because she does stuff to look cool. And by looking cool, kind of makes her stand out. (laughs) But um, character dilemma aside, uh, her giving the responsibility to, well, teach others how to fly. And... Clearly, she's not enthusiastic about it. She doesn't want to be here. She'd rather be anywhere else other than here. And her first impressions of the job is not good. Not good at all. Jacob, what do you have to say, man? Uh, I don't know. Didn't we already go through this? (laughs) Did we? With Zip? Well, with Zip and her her approach, but what about the... We have four characters. Mm. Uh, Let's see here. There's Thunder uh, of the Royal Guard of Zephyr Heights, and then there's their partner. uh, Gosh, Lightning, was it? Thunder and Lightning? I think so. I'd have to double back. And then there's Windy, who... She has a very interesting arc through this whole thing. Uh, trying to get over her fear of, of all things... Dandelions. What was it? Dandelion? Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure she played Undertale and saw Flowey at, at its worst. <laughs> ah, there you go. That would explain this this terrible fear. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then there's the uh, fruit, car- fruit supply uh, delivery Pegasus, which props to Sunny for changing her source... To reflect the new uh, deliver the new unity, although I'm not sure whoever sold her uh, fruits for her smoothie stand beforehand is happy. Mm-hmm. Thick cabbage herbs. <laughs> My cabbage. Dirty, dirty, dirty cabbage herbs. <laughs> oh boy! But uh, to to be honest, just trying to find names for the. Peg, uh, background character for this one is not easy. Like, I don't know why, but we, we don't get the uh, same treatment as we got from G four. But I think, I think we do see the royal guards here. Um, Thunderflap and well, I see one Thunderflap. Oh God, I'm scrolling through. But anyway, silver. Um. Please carry on. All right. Well, it gets going. So let's see here. Earth Pony. I'm just looking through the transcript myself. Mm -hmm. Uh, Fifi. Yeah, that's right. Fifi's flying fruit smoothie delivery. (laughs) Then there's a Zoom Zephyr Wing. That's kind of. That's something else. Mm-hmm. And Thunderflap and Windy. and it, Oh, and it's Daisy, sh- she fears. So, well, stay away from Donald Duck's girlfriend then. 
<sighs> but basically, you have several of them are not good flyers, but uh, but Wendy is just afraid of these flowers and so it's kind of hilarious to see uh izzy doing her best to help out with like sock puppet therapy <laughs> and trying to encourage her also izzy is in good form this uh, episode as she once again does her traditional ta-da mm -hmm. showing and having created an obstacle course in record time a little below her usual craft standards though mm -hmm. But I do enjoy. Actually, I, sorry, I do enjoy how all, the rest of Zip's friends are part of the process, even if they're not directly teaching, including poor Hitch, who is getting uh, so much fruit in his uh, mane that I'm wondering if it's starting to take root in his brain. <laughs> I did rhyme. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. I would make a natural, uh, natural juice joke, but that's beneath me. No, no, uh, boys. But, <clears throat> but yeah. Um, so, just by 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 looking at all the uh, uh, students that we have here, so two royal guards, uh, one, and two civilians, and. I'm just guessing the two royal guards are stationed there because they're protecting the princesses. I'm, I'm guessing that they're they got sent there because they crashed into Queen Haven. Ah, uh, yeah, they also <laughs> yeah. But yeah, um, so judging by the flyers that we have here, we see that most of them don't really know how to fly. Is it? Pretty much. Except yeah. for Fifi. F Fifi knows how to fly, but she doesn't know how to fly with a cart behind her. Yeah, yeah. she's not used to the to the added weight. Mm. Yeah, and there's a, just pretty much established in the first step is so this is happening right after everybody got their magic back. So Pegasus I haven't got used to the flying just yet mm. so that that makes sense right yeah so having a professional teach them how to fly it's it's good it's good but the severity of how bad they can't fly is bad and I, i'm just trying to think here because the way that Zip teaches them is a bit too fast and too extreme. Like it's teaching somebody how to, who who just started to paint, uh, and teaching them or just wanting them to paint the Mona Lisa. Obviously, you won't get the perf. Obviously, you won't get the Mona Lisa, but that's the analogy I can think of right now. Yeah, she needed to be reminded that, that uh, you need to do baby steps with people. Mm hmm And... Uh, sorry, go ahead. And the important thing is to not give up. That is Don't true. give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Oh, uh, yeah, that, that we do see more of Izzy's lack of uh, personal space. <laughs> Which they don't mind, I, I guess. Uh, but yes um skip skipping uh, the whole montage of them failing uh, it's it's clear that what is expected of them at their current level is a bit unrealistic but like you mentioned before silver uh, easy got the epiphany from watching a parent teach their child how to fly which is also strange in my book because they got magic the mother automatically knows how to fly i guess well she may be put she may be more interested in making sure her child can fly mm. makes sense so yeah with, with that for finney uh zip here takes that to heart and 
teaches them how to fly slowly and get them to get used to their wings and whatnot. And in the end, she managed to teach them, even with Fifi carrying her cart. Hey, awesomeness. <clears throat> you may now throw your caps in the air. Yay. Yo. Can we say that we got the new delivery pony? Uh, there will be always one delivery pony in my heart, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm not gonna accept this one. Always one in my heart. <laughs> no, you, you must accept your. You must open your heart to accept the delivery. Norman, there's a parcel of love for you. Will you sign for it? If he ain't from Derpy Express, I ain't signing anything. Oh, Norman, there's a fee if you cancel your delivery of your heart. I don't care. My heart reacts to Derpy. <laughs> but yes, um, over, overall, uh, less than... What do you guys think? Silver? Well, the lesson seems to be take it slow and build up in steps. Don't quit. It's a good a good lesson. I mean, we, we see these accelerated training montage, which is kind of funny. We're getting the highlight reel rather than the process, even though the moral is teaching follow the process. Mm-hmm. <laughs> which is also strange, and they have to do it before five. <laughs> well, yeah, five is the end of the day. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but still, uh, it is pretty interesting. I, I do like the lesson here, but... I feel like the lesson is also a bit jumbled, which is also bad. And how so? Because like in a twenty, in a twenty-five, or let's just say half an hour. In a half an hour show, you get the crescendo of uh, rising up to the peak and getting the uh, and going down slowly. Like you, you, you find the conflict, you past the conflict and you get to the resolution but with this one it's kind of whoa get to the conflict and zoom I, I find the resolution and just go to the end in quicker sessions you, you don't get that um, proper storytelling of oh uh, we we need to work our way to fly uh, this is what we need to do we we we, we we do this in quote unquote in showtime multiple days in this one I know they I feel like they're doing it for a laugh and yeah we, we can fly uh, but by us joining this um, learning session it just took us until 5 uh, until 5pm to kind of learn our lesson yay so Huzzah. yeah so to me I feel like if this was a, let's just say, make your mark, it, it will be more impactful. But in Tell Your Tales, it's kind of, all right, uh, nice character development, blah, blah, blah. But it feels like, oh, the resolution was kind of a gag. Well, I mean, the main lesson of this episode was don't give up. That is true. That is true. But I feel like there's more than one lesson here. Like, uh, take things slowly, don't give up. Uh, and if you're a teacher, uh, understand your student and work with work within their limits. And uh, also, da- Daisy, was it, Silver? The pony with the uh, Daisy phobia? Uh, Windy, Windy, who has the Daisy phobia. Yeah, and with and with Windy, I feel like you can do a lot with her. Like, oh, um, trying to face your fears, trying to not be scared of uh, stuff. Uh, you see what I mean? There, there's a lot of things that you can take it with too. But yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, sorry. No, I got nothing. Yeah, but yeah, um, I I think that's about it. Unless anybody wants to add anything. Mm, nah, I'm good. Yeah. So, 
Silver, you, you watch most of it, right? So, d- do we see future reference of this fight school? No, unfortunately, they don't follow up on this idea further. But the carrot, well, Windy and the two guards uh, do make more appearances. Fifi is more of a background character. Mm. Though, I, I guess I do want to say what makes this work is the physicality and sort of the cartoon slapstick physics. That's something that wasn't present in Make Your Mark. And at, coming off of Friendship is Magic, I think it's kind of a necessity that you have that willingness to have sort of cartoon physicality. And 3D is very limiting in that respect. Mm, yeah, pretty much. Actually, this brings me back to back when we were first discussing why G5 uh, isn't tracking as well as G4 did. And I mentioned the limitation of uh, 3D because you can't put, uh, well, the cartoon logic to treat spaces like you can in the 2D. That's right, cartoon logic. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's hard. Like to apply the same cartoon logic to three D. Oh man, it, it, it's a style. You, you need to kind of say that okay, to make this work, you need to we, we need to mash up the style. Yeah, well, so overall, I I say this episode is awesome. Yep, this episode was. A nice watch. Anything to add? It's a lot of fun, but very... Sorry, go ahead. A lot of fun, but very short. Yeah. I feel like they could have more if they, you know, do do more. But anyway, anyway, um, I, I guess that's it. And, well, let's wrap things up. If you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show. And my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Uh, Silver, where can the good people find you? On Twitter, YouTube, and DeviantArt under MLP Silver Quill. Uh, you can also do on YouTube a search for Silver, the Quill, Silver Quill and After the Fact. And then I shall appear. Uh, if you just do After the Fact, you might get a news program. Oh, I forgot. But I want it that. on the record. I was here first. Yeah, I, I remember that, and I forgot about them. That's how unmemorable they are. <laughs> and uh, from my YouTube, you can find links to my Patreon and Kofi if you wish to support after the fact. Awesome, awesome. Go do so, guys. And conventions. Uh, HarmonyCon, uh, February 2nd through the 4th. I shall be a community guest, and we're going to be in a new venue in the heart of Dallas. I'll be very curious to see uh, what that's like. Hmm. Hope it's fun. Uh, man, talking about Dallas, I I want to go to the States. The food I hear is just amazing. <sighs> very hungry. Anywho, well, sorry, go ahead. all good things in time. True. All good things in time. True, 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 true. Anywho, Jacob, what about you? Where can the good people find you? Uh, you can find me on DeviantArt under the username Yakafon Torkar, under the Twitter username Tales of the Ashes. If you're interested in reading, uh, in reading the story Tumor Rising, you can find it on filmfiction.net. And if you're interested in reading an original story featuring anthropomorphic animals in medieval fantasy setting called Tales of the Ashes, you can find it on the talesoftheashes.com. And unfortunately, there's no uh, concert I'm currently attending. Ah, it's okay. Anyhow, also please subscribe and read us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay current. Okay, that's strange. Uh, links are in the show notes. Uh, if you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Jacob, Lucky Knight, and Master Flag. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Vrequil. I'm Jakob. And we'll guys catch you next week here with another fun episode on this show. See ya! Adios! Bye-bye! Woo! That was something else. Now, time to teach my nephew how not to do a podcast, how not to... 
something. I'll teach my nephew something. Yay! That sounds good. I mean, the usual strategy is, you know, just throw them in and see if they swim. That's a, of course, that's a terrible way to do it. That's a great idea, Silver. I'll do that. 